If your carriage looks like a time machine and your clothes are a century old, you're not crazy. You're a time traveler. Meet Professor John Smith, an eccentric scientist with a flair for the dramatic and a passion that's out of this world. In his dusty old lab, he unveils his latest creation to his skeptical daughter, Danielle, a time machine disguised as an ordinary carriage. It can't be real, Dad, she says, her voice echoing with disbelief. But as they buckle up and set the dials to 1910, London awaits, unknown and majestic in its Edwardian glory. Moments later, they step out, not just into a different place, but a different time, their clothes magically transformed, blending seamlessly into the bustling city life of the past. Convinced and awestruck, Danielle's doubts vanish. Yet, the real twist comes when they attempt to return. The controls jam, the lights flicker, and suddenly, London is gone. They're stranded, not in the past, but in a future so distant it's unrecognizable. The year 1 million AD stretches before them, wild and uncharted. What wonders and dangers await them in this futuristic world? Stay tuned and hold on to your seats as their journey through time. Am I the only one that didn't know about the wonders of the year 1 million AD? From futuristic cities to heartwarming human kindness, join us on a breathtaking journey through time. Meet Professor John Smith and his daring daughter Danielle. Stranded in the year 1 million AD, they found themselves in quite the pickle. But thanks to the ultra-advanced, super-friendly future folks, their time machine was fixed up in no time. Fast forward a few days and it's goodbye future, hello 2003. But you know how curiosity can get the better of us, especially when time machines are involved. Despite her dad's warning, Danielle couldn't resist. One sneaky nighttime mission later, she's blasting off to 2350. Imagine her awe, flying cars zooming, people jetpacking across the sky. But as all good adventures must, Danielle hits the home button, returning to her own time, safe and sound. So what's the moral of the story? Well, time travel might be cool, but sneaking out with the time machine? Maybe check with your folks first. This is first. gonna blow your mind. Imagine being struck by a car and waking up not in a hospital, but in the past. What would you do? Meet Matthew Bond, just your average guy, juggling errands in the bustling streets of the city, but one day, his routine takes a shocking twist. Rushing to meet his boss's demands, Matthew dashes across the street. Suddenly, a car speeds towards him, and in a flash, everything changes. Disoriented, unable to see or hear, Matthew's world goes dark. When he awakens, the sounds of the modern world are gone. The streets are empty, the cars vintage. Confusion sets in as he stumbles to his feet. It's like stepping onto a movie set of the 1960s, but there are no cameras, no directors. A passerby offers help and with a few words sends Matthew's mind spinning. It's 1963. Did Matthew Bond accidentally time travel or is he trapped in a dream he can't escape? What do you think, sci-fi fans? Could this be real or is it all just an elaborate illusion? Why did 100% of the Smith family decide to jump into a time machine? Because adventure waits for no one, especially when history's pages are ready to be rewritten. Meet the Smiths Danielle, the daring daughter, Professor John, the genius inventor, and Linda, the ever-supportive mom. One day, after a scolding and a two-week grounding, the Smiths made a random leap through time, landing smack in 1860s London. Imagine swapping jeans for petticoats and meeting legends like Queen Victoria and Charles Dickens. But here's the twist. Their accidental trip inspired Dickens to pen a novel titled Visitors from Another World. Returning to 2003, the Smiths found their quirky adventure immortalized on bookshelves, a family trip that literally rewrote history. So next time you think your family vacations are crazy, just remember, they could be storybook Stop worthy. Stop dismissing your daily walks as mundane. Imagine stepping into the future with each stride you take. This isn't sci-fi, it's the curious case of Liam Redman. Picture this, a regular Tuesday afternoon, Liam's just crossing the street and bam, he rounds the corner into 2045? As he steps onto a street lined with soaring cars and landing buses, confusion doesn't even begin to cover it. He wanders into a news agent only to meet the man behind the counter who claims to be him 20 years older. If that's not enough to make your brain do backflips, in walks a woman and kids, his future family shocked. So was he. After a whirlwind of time-warped revelations, Liam steps back onto his familiar street back in the present. And guess what? He keeps his time-traveling afternoon stroll to himself. Because who would believe that a simple walk could be a gateway to the future? So next time you lace up those walking shoes, remember, 
You could be just a step away from the adventure of a lifetime, or at least a peek into 2045. Imagine finding a gadget that could zip you to the past or fling you far into the future. That's exactly what happened to Ellie Vincent on an ordinary afternoon. Picture this. Ellie, just like any other day, is strolling home from school, lost in thoughts of time travel when she spots a gleaming gold watch lying by the roadside. Curiosity piqued, she slips it onto her wrist. Click! With a twist of the dial, she's suddenly standing in a sunny field. It's last Saturday. Shocked yet thrilled, Ellie zaps herself back to her present, only to wonder, what about the future? Driven by a mix of fear and excitement, she twists the watch forward. Time whizzes by like pages in a flipbook, stopping abruptly in the year 3024. Ellie finds herself in a library where a calendar catches her eye. It's a thousand years ahead! Realising the power at her wrist and fearing its loss, she resets everything to the moment she found the watch, making it disappear before it ever existed. And this time, she just keeps walking, her mind brimming with what if. If your world looks familiar but feels eerily different, you might just be in a parallel universe. Meet the Smith's Professor John, his wife Linda, and their ever-curious daughter Danielle. Famous for their time-travelling escapades, this family thought they knew what to expect as their time machine zoomed through the years at a breakneck speed, but this time to, they were in for a twist. Instead of shooting through time, they veered sideways. Landing in 2003, the world looked like a scene from a futuristic movie, yet something was off. Their clothes didn't change and the city buzzed with unfamiliar technology. Yes, they hadn't travelled through time. They had slipped into a parallel universe. Trying to correct their course, they aimed for the future of this alternate reality. But the twist? They ended up right back in their own 2003, safe, but minds buzzing with questions. Could they meet their alternate selves next time? The possibilities are endless. Prologue, the eve of the unthinkable. Daniel Knowles was just an ordinary guy. He lived in a world of instant noodles and streaming services, his days were filled with the humdrum of his programming job, his nights were spent lost in virtual reality games, life was predictable, it was comfortable, it was about to change in a way he could never have imagined, it was the eve of his 25th birthday, and the clock was ticking down to a moment that would rewrite his reality. The air crackled with a strange energy that night. Daniel felt it as he walked home from his late shift, street lights flickered, the hairs on his arm stood on end. He dismissed it as a trick of the overactive imagination. He was a man of logic, not superstition. He didn't believe in premonitions, but something was shifting, aligning in the fabric of his existence. He just didn't know it yet. Chapter 1 From 2024 to 1985 Daniel woke with a gasp. He wasn't in his bed. He wasn't even in his time. Gone were the sleek metallic walls of his apartment. He found himself in a cramped room with floral wallpaper and a heavy wooden dresser. The air smelled different, cleaner somehow, but with an underlying scent of something unfamiliar. Disoriented, he sat up and looked around. Panic tightened its grip on his chest. He stumbled out of bed and into the hallway. Strange music, tinny and high-pitched, drifted from a nearby room. He followed the sound, his heart pounding a frantic rhythm against his ribs. As he peered around the doorway, a wave of dizziness washed over him. He gripped the doorframe for support. This couldn't be real, it had to be a dream. Chapter 2. Lost and Disoriented The people in the room were dressed in clothes he'd only ever seen in old movies. Bell-bottoms, platform shoes, hair in styles that defied gravity. A group of teenagers danced with an abandon that spoke of a different era, an era he never lived through. His mind struggled to reconcile what his eyes were seeing. This couldn't be happening. It was impossible. Yet here he was. He tried to speak to ask for help, but the words caught in his throat. His voice sounded strange, distant, as if echoing across a vast chasm of time. He looked down at his hands. They seemed different, younger somehow. Panic surged through him, threatening to overwhelm him. He had to get out of there. He had to find a way back to his own time. Chapter 3. The Lawman and the Outlandish Tale he ran out into the night, the strange music fading behind him. The streets were dark, lit only by the pale glow of the moon. He didn't know where he was going, just that he had to get away. As he ran, he fumbled in his pockets for his phone. It was gone. His wallet, his keys, everything was gone. He was alone, adrift in a sea of the unknown. That's when he saw the police car. 
relief flooded through him. Finally, someone who could help. He ran towards the car, waving his arms frantically. The officer inside, a burly man with a bushy mustache, eyed him with suspicion. Daniel poured out his story, his words tumbling over each other in his haste. The officer listened patiently, a flicker of amusement in his eyes. When Daniel was finished, the officer chuckled. Time travel, huh? That's a new one. The slam of the cell door echoed in the silence. Daniel sat on the cot, his head cradled in his hands. He had been booked for vagrancy and disorderly conduct. His protests, his insistence on the truth, were met with skepticism and laughter. To them, he was a madman, a delusional fool. Despair threatened to consume him. He was trapped, lost in a time not his own. But even in the depths of his despair, a flicker of hope remained. He remembered something his grandmother used to say, the truth has a way of revealing itself. He clung to those words, a lifeline in a sea of uncertainty. He just had to hold on, to find a way to make them believe. The courtroom was a blur of faces and hushed whispers. Daniel sat beside his court-appointed lawyer, a kind woman with tired eyes. She didn't believe his story either, but she saw something in his eyes, a desperation that transcended any lie. The judge, a stern-looking man with a receding hairline, listened with thinly veiled impatience. Just when all hope seemed lost, a commotion erupted at the back of the courtroom. A young woman burst through the doors, her face pale, her eyes wide with a mixture of shock and disbelief. It's him, she gasped, pointing at Daniel. It's really him. The woman was Sarah, a historian who had been researching local legends about a stranger who had appeared out of thin air back in 1985. She had dismissed them as folklore, nothing more than the ramblings of bored townspeople. But the details in her grandmother's diary were eerily similar to Daniel's story. His birth date, his description, even the details of his disappearance. It was too much to be a coincidence. The courtroom buzzed with excitement. The judge, visibly intrigued, called for order. Sarah approached the stand, her voice trembling with a mixture of excitement and trepidation. As she spoke, the impossible became plausible. The truth, as it so often does, had a way of revealing itself. The days that followed were a whirlwind of activity. News of Daniel's time travel spread like wildfire, making headlines around the world. Scientists and researchers descended upon the town, eager to study him, to unlock the secrets of his journey. He became an overnight celebrity, his story a testament to the boundless possibilities of the universe. But amidst the chaos, Daniel never forgot the reason he had ended up in 1985. He was determined to find a way back to his own time, to his own life. He worked tirelessly with Sarah and a team of physicists, piecing together the fragments of his experience, searching for the key to unlocking the door of time. The night sky pulsed with energy, the air crackled with anticipation. After weeks of research and experimentation, the moment of truth had arrived. Daniel stood within a complex array of machines, his heart pounding in his chest. He closed his eyes, taking a deep breath. He thought of his family, his friends, the life that awaited him. With a blinding flash of light and a deafening roar, he was gone. The machine sputtered and died, leaving behind the faint scent of ozone and the echo of a journey that defied explanation. Daniel Knowles had returned to his own time, forever changed by his unbelievable journey to 1985. 